Did you know there's a huge amount of water on the surface of the moon? Don't be surprised if this wasn't a widely known fact yet, because the idea that the surface of the moon could hold water was only confirmed back in 2009. In outer space, for humans, water is a pretty big deal, as you can easily turn it into oxygen or use it as a hydrogen fuel source. This discovery could actually lead humanity to build a base on the surface of the moon. Why? And which countries are planning to settle there? Find all that out and more in our video today. Back in August 2023, India and Russia competed against each other with the finish line residing in the lunar south pole. Things heated up real quick as India launched their probe four weeks before Russia, albeit in favor of a longer route. And just as the world thought that Russia was about to win the race to the moon, something unfortunate happened. The probe Russia dubbed Lunar 25 lost connection and got severely damaged while attempting to land. Just four days later, the Indian probe made a successful touchdown, effectively winning this round. With that success rounded up, the scientists at NASA are working day and night preparing to return to the moon in a few years' time, with a ton more lunar activity hiding behind the eclipse. Just last year, according to the European Space Agency, around 250 missions are about to take over the next decade alone, alongside 400 separate unofficial projections. All of these kind of make one realize how the moon, in the not-so-distant future, is surprisingly about to become the hottest real state away from Earth. India started 2020 off with a literally out-of-this-world bang with the announcement of a new lunar mission, which apparently lit a fire of competition under the Russian banner. However, having already quote-unquote had an edge in space exploration back in the 50s, Russia was effectively dominating the Americans. In fact, Russia already had seven probes on the moon, which makes the unfortunate accident a wound they won't recover from anytime soon. The main culprit behind the accident was presumably a misfiring of the propulsion system. Considering the last lunar venture from Russia took place almost 50 years ago, can you blame them for being a bit rusty? Another advantage India had was how they managed to pull it off relatively cheap at around $73 million. In general, NASA has a tendency to spend billions of dollars on space exploration, and Russia's space venture, in comparison, costs three times more than India at around $200 million. While landing at the South Pole of the Moon isn't the easiest job in the world, the situation becomes a lot muddier upon the realization of the Moon being littered with kilometers deep craters and a negative 200 degrees Celsius temperature. Also, the sun sits at a shallow angle, which makes the dark side of the moon one of the core things an astronaut would need to worry about, Hollywood jokes aside. With that, the sensors in any lunar lander would have a hard time calculating how deep the craters could potentially be, which is more dangerous than it sounds. With all that, India became the very first country to be able to land at the south pole of the moon, which in itself is an incredible achievement. The Indian Space Research Organization also managed to discover the existence of ice on the moon back in 2009, when water on the surface of the moon was nothing but a theory. The Indian spacecraft, aptly named Chandrayaan-3, was built out of three main components, a propulsion module, a lander, and a rover. By carrying out thermal, seismological, and mineral tests, a lot of the shuttle's primary objective was covered. And after a few days of operation, unfortunately, the rover wasn't being able to recover from its state of sleep. In the meantime, Americans have decided to pull out the big guns in the form of NASA's Artemis program, a program that trained astronauts to go back to the moon by late 2024 or 2025. The difference is, the mission's core objective wouldn't be to land on the moon, but to orbit around the moon for information. Be that as it may, it still stands for humans, for the first time in 51 years, are getting trained to go back to the moon, which in itself is another big step for humankind. The Artemis program is being led by NASA in the United States, but has global connections that span across Canada, Europe, Japan, Israel, Australia, and India. First formed in 2017, the program had one long-term goal, and that was to establish a permanent base on the moon, and by doing that, come to terms with whether it'll be possible to explore beyond the moon, Mars in particular. Remember the sci-fi movies with an intergalactic scope? Well, this might as well be the beginning. The four astronauts in question are Reed Wiseman as the commander, Victor Glover as the pilot, 
Christina Cook as the mission specialist, and Jeremy Henson as the Canadian representative. Back on November 16th, 2022, a test flight took place which included a dummy pilot who was able to successfully orbit the moon and touch back down. Said mission was a test of the spacecraft's performance and the generated heat shield upon entering the Earth's atmosphere. 2025 will be following suit, but with actual humans on board, with the first mission lasting for up to 10 days. Intergalactic traversal, even the mere concept of it, is enough to run a chill down anyone's spine. However, the sheer rush of adrenaline isn't enough reason for mankind to risk their existence out in the dark and cold vacuums of space. But imagine it like this. If mankind, or a country in particular, can manage to somehow lay a roadmap that'll lead to intergalactic travel, imagine the glory not for the country, but for humankind as a whole. Wouldn't you do it if given the chance, risking it all? While the moon might only be the beginning, this could be the moment that the future would look back a hundred years from now on with nostalgia and utter to themselves, this was it, this was the beginning. But in the near future, would it actually be the beginning or the beginning of the end? The one that has all these answers is all-knowing time itself. And we as mere and fragile humans don't have a lot to do but to wait it out and see.